what's going on. Good evening. <laughs> All righty. So, tonight, me and Eric have Brian. You know, I can never say your last name right. I go with Dowdy. Dowdy, I, I go with Daltrey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From the Board of Ed, um, every so often I get him on, and tonight, Eric's going to get a shot at him. Oh, oh boy. And uh, I promised I wouldn't beat you up. Okay. And I mean, I, well, you'll find out. Later. Okay. <laughs> With everything that's going on in this city lately, and I tell you, we don't really have to watch the news to see how things are going in other parts of the country because it's happening right here. And it's kind of sad because, you know, it looks like it's kind of like a, a growth going on in the city. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening, and I, I guess i got to give some credit to the mayor for that. Um, but... It made me think about what's going on in the schools while all this other stuff is going on. Like I was just talking to you about a, a lockdown, the procedure of a lockdown. And um, so maybe the people would like to hear what you guys, yeah. what the school does, not you personally. Right. And so you, you've probably seen the paper. I think it was last night or this morning there was an article about different lockdowns or, or actually secure buildings within the city. I know it was Benny Dover, Jennings, our central office. Oh, there was a, a threat. Right, and, and I think it was uh, Isaac and uh, RMMS. There was, it was a whole, I think it was five schools total that were shut down earlier this week. Uh, and in that case, it wasn't a lockdown, it was a, a secure the building, which basically means no one can come inside. It's a normal day, just no one can come inside, no one can leave type of thing. And the reason that happened is there was an incident um, around the city, which was also yeah. in, in some of the articles. So I say, you know, out of an abundance of caution, we, we close the buildings down so no one can get in. Uh, so the, unfortunately, like you're referring to, it's an incident in the city, but it affects the schools. Um, yeah. If it was a, a lockdown per se, that would mean there'd be an incident within the school. But it it affects everything in the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially the, mag, the magnet schools. Well, you have people, a big part of that for New London is getting people from other towns to send their kids here. Now, if they see all this stuff going on and they decide they're going to stop sending their kids, the more kids that don't show up, doesn't that a affect the money we get from the state? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we get more money from students who come in from out of district than you know, in district. Yeah. It's a magnet funding. It's been interesting, not just here, but across the state. Magnet districts have been struggling really since COVID began. And I don't know if we're past COVID. I feel like we are because... I but think we are. I think we are, but I still see people with masks. I still see people having issues, and we see little mini but outbreaks. That's, but that's by choice. Uh, the masks are by choice, but I also see mini outbreaks every okay. now and then. But I, I, I would say we just have to be cautious, you know, just in general. Uh, but schools have had issues getting magnet um, kids around the state. It's not just New London. Well, we're supposed to have a percentage, like, what was it, 25% from out of out 20 of 20%, percent, right. In each school. In, right. Is that right? That's not happening, is no, it? No, it's not happening right now. You're so that, that does affect Absolutely. The, how much money we're going to be getting. Absolutely. And we're so, according to the number, uh, numbers and monies that was supposed to be by what, a certain date? We're not meeting those goals. So is the state reimbursing or no? No, this, well, it would be nice, Eric. But what I've learned from the state is they don't reimburse many times, and a lot of times they have a lot of unfunded mandates. I mean, I don't blame the board. Well, boards on. I'm not sure who I'm supposed to blame. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm looking at your numbers. Yeah, yeah. And. <laughs> They're bad. Thank you. <laughs> so, I, I didn't want to. I'm not going to shy away from it, Eric. Okay. Uh, yeah, but, they're bad, but. Well, and the Dennis, few people you that give kids. you a straight. You don't have answer. the kids in the school, yeah. so, right? My daughter graduated in 98. My son graduated in 2003. And he said, after his graduating class, New London was going downhill. It's interesting you say. I have, I have three kids. They're, they're a little younger than yours. I'm minor around 20, a little bit older. And uh, I've heard people say about my older daughter's class after that class went it went downhill right <laughs> it, 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 I, so I, I think I hear what you're saying but we hear that all the time okay and, and so the one thing I would say um, our numbers aren't good uh, the state had a one of the things I'm going to talk about here is the state had a new reading program that they wanted to implement and um, it's a K to three reading program and these stats are basically test tests you know as, as you saw and it's, it's just page 17 <laughs> it's a snippet 
But I, I look at it, and one of the challenges we have, we have a lot of ELL, English language learners, in our school district. So let's assume Dennis comes in, he's in third grade, he doesn't speak English, and they say, Dennis, read this book, and we're going to give you a test. H how do we think Dennis is going to do if he doesn't speak Spanish? I know, right. Terribly. And, and that's where our numbers, it's hard to get a real number. Why would they, why would anybody ask a kid in third grade that can't speak English to read an English book. You might want to ask the state of Connecticut, Dennis. I mean, you can't. You can, you can take that book and plop it in front of some of the people that represent our city and our towns, and they're not going to be able to read the damn book. And they know English. But to expect that right. out of a, a, well, someone that's never spoken English before. Right. And so that's kind of crazy to use that as some kind of. And so, yeah. And so one of the things I, I wanted to say, you know, we get our numbers. We do it in October, we do it in February, we do it at the end of the year, you know, that type of thing. So math, you know, English or whatever it might be. And our numbers for K to three, they've gone up double and triple where kids are on grade level. So the numbers, I agree, Eric, you didn't want to say it. Right. <laughs> I said it, but then I see pockets where things are improving yeah. right. greatly. And we all have to understand, I'm, I don't want to use COVID as an excuse, but we've all had kids at home for two to three years and they've had lots of freedoms. And now you bring them back into the classroom. And the first thing we say to them is you need to sit in a classroom in a chair for X amount of time. It doesn't work. I, my, my wife was a teacher for 20 years Yeah. at um, Nathan Hale, basically. And she had to do the uh, Zoom with the parents and yeah. everything. And, and a lot of the parents couldn't understand because they don't speak well, you know, English. And I said, right, it's, right. It's, it's Spanish speaking mostly, I guess. And the kids, they, they couldn't even get the kids to sit down and, and do what they were supposed to do. So wasn't Jennings supposed to be Spanish English? Yeah, it was supposed to be a dual language school. Dual language. Uh, and, I, that's, and it's not even, it, what, what do they call it? school. Yeah, it's not right. a magnet school anymore. And I would almost say sarcastically, um, we have such a large Spanish-speaking population. We're a dual-language district at this point. Uh, and, and it's a struggle. You know, as you said, you're home and you're trying to learn things. But then when the kids get back to the classroom and there's structure, we have to reteach the kids that there has to be structure. Right. Because at home, uh, hypothetically, you could have no parents at home. Right. And you're expecting a kid to go on Zoom or, or whatever platform, you know, kids were using. Uh, that's tough. And we're finally getting back to, I think, more normal, however you want to define normal, <laughs> this year. I'm not year. sure there is a normal anymore. But I personally don't blame the teachers. I mean, I've seen my wife struggle. I've seen her almost in tears that she is spending untold number of hours when she was at home for COVID and stuff like that. And it's, and these kids weren't, do you, who do you, who is really to blame? Is it the parents who can, who, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think. I, I don't think there's anybody to blame. I, and I, I would never blame our teachers in the, in the instance we're talking about because of March of 2021, uh, we, we shut down the schools and essentially said, Eric, it's Friday. We're shutting down and on Monday. You need to learn a new language and teach all of our kids mm -hmm. on Monday. And, and that's what we, not we, just New London, but that's what everybody did across the nation. So to blame teachers, I think, is ridiculous. Right. Because you're doing two things. You're, you, you, you're teaching online. You may be teaching in the classroom. There's all kinds of different things. Uh, I never, I would never blame parents either. Every household has different circumstances. Um, some parents have the ability to help their kids. Others don't. Others might have to work. I mean, it, you, we can sit around trying to blame, or I would say we could focus on trying to rebuild. But I would also say don't waste what happened in the pandemic by going back to the way we used to have it. Change and adapt and move forward. Would you ever go back to closing the schools and, and, and then doing teaching from home? I think it would have to depend upon the circumstances. I, I mean, I don't think if we had asked that question five years ago, would, would you even, even be able to come up with something where we would have closed all the schools? I know that my, my wife and I know some of the other teachers that 
it was ridiculous to close the schools. Um, and I understand the pandemic. I mean, I'm in the medical field, so I understand that. But I had to go out, wear a mask, essential and, people, and, had to. and treat the patients. I, I do know, though, that my wife was saying a lot of these kids had problems because they couldn't see my yeah. wife's lips. I, I, I definitely know, teaching think, and things like that. I, I especially think for the younger kids, you learn to read lips and phonics and different. And I'm watching you. You know, you're forming stuff and you just pick up things, and. We didn't have that, right? You, you know, um, I mean, reading lips. If I'm, if I can't, you said you're hard of hearing. Uh, you're, so if you have a trouble, sometimes you, you will read lips. We all do, right. even when you can hear well. Right. Or if, if Dennis and I are in a meeting and I kind of whisper something to you, the visual cues, absolutely, we're gone. So when our kids come back, we all have to understand they're not just jumping right back in. They got to learn these things, you know. And, and that's such and, and adults. Too. And we also have to learn how to talk face to face again, right? Because we've been talking on a screen, which works. Um, I actually think some of the things that we did with Zoom we should keep moving forward. I, I've talked to Dennis before. I do a lot of the building projects. We saved a ton of money on mileage because oh. our architects and other people can hop on Zoom and have a meeting. And quite frankly, like an engineer might only talk for two minutes in a meeting, yeah. But they might have driven an hour. So now they sit, they yeah, wait but, for their cue. But how does that, if it's something that's important to a neighborhood or mm -hmm. a city, and people want to be there to see what's going on, like at a council meeting or a board of ed meeting, mm -hmm. you can't do that with Zoom. Uh, we had more people watching on Zoom than we have ever had. How do you know that? Because there's a little thing, a pull down menu, which will tell you who's on Zoom. So we, we had more participants on Zoom than I think. All right, so you save money on mileage. Right, I'm not saying it's and, a but small thing But you also thing, save money on heating these buildings, supposedly. Oil, you know, because you didn't need to have all the, the uh, fuel to... Yeah, you could extend and, it to and water electricity or whatever. Electricity and, and water and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But still... The budget goes up every year. Yeah, uh, and, and I brought this here just to, to throw, throw it out. We have cost savers and cost drivers, so I, you can you can look at them. Um, you, you're not wrong, uh, I, and I think the things you're talking about, we we did or we have saved money, but they're not as much as you know giving teacher right. raises well, and different. I they always thought teachers are underpaid in New London. I, I, it's not just New London; it's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. Well, I, my wife would have new teachers in her school. Under her, and she would tell them after a year, two years, go to Groton, go to Waterford, get out of New London because you'll be able to make ten or twenty thousand dollars more. And, and it's a huge challenge that we had during COVID, where other districts were offering what you just said, ten and twenty thousand dollars more to recruit right. our teachers. Which, how do you compete with that? If I'm well, there's a lot of you know, as far as that goes, depending on who's making the offer of $20,000 more, you gotta look at the, the cities or the environment that they will now be working in compared to in this city or any major city. Um, it's I feel bad for teachers because they have to answer to a union that's, to me, is only interested in getting more and more money. I don't think the union gives a shit about the kids or the teachers. But they're in a box to where they, there's nothing they can do about it. They have to be in that union. Um, you, you take, um, anyway, I, I, what, I lose it once in a while. What does this mean, reduction in a cabinet level position? So we always get complaints that uh, essentially we have too many people at central office. I, okay. Uh, so what, what it says yes. is. And their salaries were too high. Well, and I, I wouldn't agree that the salaries are too high. I think they're competitive across the market. This is what central office people get paid across the state. Six-figure income? Absolutely. Look across the state. I, 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 I didn't set this up. I can understand up. it in Fairfield County or, you know, certain, a lot of different, but this is, we're an urban poor area. Sure. Uh, and, um, and not all of us, of course, no. but okay. I just but, don't understand how, how do we keep hiring, when, when you keep hiring a new um, administrator or uh, superintendent of schools, and you throw more money at these people, and I'm sorry, I do not care 
She may be a really nice person. I don't think she's worth the money she's So she's how making. much do you think a superintendent should get paid? I don't think a superintendent, well, first of all, let's, or let's put it in perspective. Yeah. How many kids are in the, in the New London school system? So we'll go with around 2,000, give or take. 2,000? Mm -hmm. it, it, it goes, we have 835 if you want it just at the high school, and then you can go out. I, I don't have the exact numbers okay. in front of me, so, so, two, so we'll just go with 2,000 because it's a round number. All right, so 2,000 uh, 2, kids. Mm -hmm. What is the superintendent getting paid? 250, 280,000? No, it's around 200,000. 200? Yep. Oh, that's, that is different. That's, yeah. But you can, but let's t just, just So to, you're talking about $100 per kid. So let's play this out for just a second. So you have NFA. I believe they pay 350000 for a campus. How many kids in that campus? That I can't give you the answer because I don't know. So, I, I mean, but that, that's the situation. You're talking about a million plus kids in New York City. Sure. And they, so the superintendent has all these different assistants and everything. I understand that. But this is the problem in Connecticut and a lot of in New, Ling New England, Math uh, Maine, fix that problem and regionalized. That yeah. you don't need a superintendent in every town. So I'm a big fan of regionalizing certain things. I don't know if I would be in favor of regionalizing education. I have to look into it more. But everybody likes to protect their little Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And you know, I've tried on certain things and I go to people and it's just like you get this brick wall. I mean we could regionalize busing for school districts, but everybody wants their piece of the pie. We could do some stuff with waste management. But again, we seem to reject regionalization. I, I, and it, even, it's because of the very thing you said, yeah, because right. everybody wants to be king and they're little king. Right. I even tried with the state, the Connecticut State Department of Education. They want, it, they want to do um, online learning, which I agree with. You could offer a class. So hypothetically, you want to offer Chinese. But we don't have enough kids in New London. So we could partner with Waterford or East Lyme or a few, or even like Weathersville, you know, somewhere else around the mm -hmm. state. And I said, well, why are we limiting ourselves? Why can't we partner with schools in Rhode Island? In Chicago, yeah, absolutely. in California, and it was shut down. Nope, but these are our shut board. Down. I, I don't get it. That, to me, that is the way you offer your kids more. So if they have an interest, let's say there's two kids who are really passionate about, you, you're an electrician. They're really passionate about like electrical work, but we can't offer it because there's not enough interest. Grab five school districts, put them together, Ab yes. and do it. But again, you think the state would be spot and open up more uh, trade schools? Yeah, and, and the, the, I, I'm, that's what we need. Those uh, are the people that, after they get out of school, have the best chance of getting a job that's paying decent money. It, Most people that go to college nowadays get out and. Unless you're in an engineering college, let's put it this way sciences. <laughs> mathematics, things like you go into liberal arts, forget it. Yeah, I, I'm a musician, so I hear what you're saying. My daughter's an engineer. <laughs> she, she walked out. I, I, had, I did her taxes this year, and I went, "Really? You well, make I, more than I've ever made." Yeah, but the whole. My son would say, "We were at a different time." I mean, I paid my first job when I was 16 years old. I got paid a dollar fifty an hour. Now you're getting paid. 15? And then I got out of high school. I started at EB. I was making 269 hours. And my wife worked, started at the hospital at 236 an hour. Yeah. My first job as a physical therapist was 625 an hour. Sure. And, and again, like you said, different time, it's different, different world. different times and everything else is so expensive. I, so I, I understand that. I mean, I go into a store and I see a bag of chips for $5. Oh. And yeah. I, and I think, well, I shouldn't have them anyways, but now I really don't want to have them. I, I know. I know. <laughs> you know, it's getting to the point where you go into a grocery store with a hundred dollar bill and you're only going to be able to buy 20, 20 things because yeah. everything's about five bucks. Well, and I think the, the, the worst part about that, Dennis, is and it's something we actually I think we're dealing with a, fairly well in New London at the school district level. You go in with your hundred dollars and you should probably get you know, to stay healthy, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, all that stuff, but you can't. So you have to get all the canned stuff and the frozen stuff just to stretch your dollar. Yeah, but even my wife was saying these kids are offered all these fresh meals and everything. And they're throwing it all away. They want the chips. They want the pizzas. They want the things that aren't necessarily. So, I, I agree, although um, I, I agree that they, they want the other things. You know, our, we have brigade in our school district. It's 100% fresh food. Um, we say, I think it's up to sixth grade, that every kid sixth grade and under has never had a chicken nugget in a school building because it's all fresh. 
Uh, and what I found um, after we shut down the schools, a dentist knows I went and I, I delivered food in the community along with our buses to, to kids. And I had asked kids, you know, they would come to the stop with their parents, they'd come up, we'd give them a meal for a few days or whatever it is. And I asked them if they liked the school food. And a lot of them said yes, and they said, but we miss the carrots at home. And so they were excited. The carrots? The carrot sticks. They get a little bag of oh, carrot okay. sticks. Okay. Okay. I want to I wanna jump on something that we touched on earlier, and it's about the Hispanic, Spanish speaking or yeah. whatever. Um, now, is there a, in your budget, is there a certain amount that's just for that purpose? So... We, we have line items for English learners. Uh, it wouldn't be specifically just Spanish. Uh, you, you had mentioned Spanish earlier, and that's the predominant uh, yeah. uh, non-English language, but we also have Portuguese uh, and a bunch of other ones. Portuguese mm -hmm. seems to be, we've had a lot of influx of people from Brazil this year. I, I don't know why. What's the, what's the biggest um, race of people, I don't know if that's the right word to use, in the schools, yeah. the <laughs> kids? Yeah, thank yeah you. Hispanic. Um, it's Hispanic? Yep. And I don't have the numbers right in front no, of me. No, no, the reason right. I ask that is because I'm thinking, first of all, to teach them English, you've got to be able to know what they're saying in their own language, <laughs> pretty much. So those teachers, for that, I've got to know at least the two languages. Right. I mean, and, now and, what, and, I'm, what I want to know is you and I, all of us here, have seen that the, the, prom the prominent race that or ethnicity, whatever, is coming into New London, and I think is going to take over New London, is Hispanic. Now, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I mean, they're, I, all the ones I've seen mostly are very hardworking people, and they, they take care of their own first, their own people first, and they do well. But are we going to, is the school going to be able to keep up? The more people, Hispanics, that come in that have kids, goes to the school, that's more kids that have to possibly learn English. Do you even have enough teachers no. to do that? No, and it's not just New London, Dennis. This well, is, I know, but this we're, is a we're whole talking, state we're talking about The state New just London. put out brand new statistics yesterday because they collect all the data, you know, that type of thing. And this is a statewide issue, and, and we don't have enough staff to, you know, get kids up to grade level where, where they need to be. And mm -hmm. it, it's a huge challenge. Uh, I mean, I, I had a great opportunity at Benny Dover. I went in uh, to talk to, there was about 30 incoming new students. And Dennis, they were awesome. They were sweet, they were charming, uh, but I had a translator. You know, to help me out and it was interesting too because it's not just Spanish but they're from around the world and just like English um, there's some words that don't translate real well or we use different words and they might use in England or different things and and there were times we just got stumped because a word in Spanish from uh, Brazil is different than a word yeah. in Mexico and, right. uh, and you it, must go crazy with the Asians or the Chinese folks I, I, I haven't dealt because there's there's different well, dialects, different I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that was one of the challenges. It was, you know, um, and then, you know, obviously sometimes there is no translation, so then it becomes an English word, uh, like website, I think is one of those oddball ones that uh, there isn't there. But it, it, that's a challenge. There aren't enough teachers. Uh, I really worry uh, in teaching in general. You said your wife was a teacher for 20 plus years. During COVID, college enrollment dropped about 30%. Mm -hmm. In two years, when that class gets to graduating and we're all of a sudden down another 30% of a pool to choose from, what do we do? So what's the percentage of full-time substitutes? In so we have um, substitutes that are employed by the district, and then right. they also use Kelly Services. I, I, Eric, I'm not sure I would know what percent. Because not, you don't have enough teachers. Right? I agree. I know that. Yeah. Um, no one does. And if anybody says I, oh, I know that, do, I know they do, that. they're nuts. So I'm not sure if this is proper. How many illegals are, are here? I have no idea, and I don't ask, because when they enter the doors, it's my job as a Board of Ed me a member to take care of the kids. That's okay. it. Okay. You know, I mean, if you ask and they tell you they are, what are you, what are you going to do then? Well, nothing. I know. <laughs> I, mean, but I'm just one, I was just wondering. Yeah, but, I have okay, no idea. What's, what's the policy? in New London regarding transgender? We, I don't believe we actually have one, and it hasn't come up at all, quite frankly. I know you had asked me about yeah. this before. Um, I, it hasn't. No one's even mentioned it, <laughs> except on your show. I, how are no, you going to feel as a, on the board, but as a father with daughters, if Lamont says, no, you've got you to let these transgenders compete in the sports, in women's sports? I never hear of any transgender wanting to compete in men's sports, yeah. but always the women's sports. And and 
they can go into the locker rooms and take a shower, you know, like this woman was saying on TV. You know, I, I come walking around the corner, here's this guy standing there totally naked, and you know he's not a woman, even mm -hmm. though he thinks he is, he's not. Um, if they pass that down in Connecticut to say, okay, well, transgenders or whatever, how would you feel about that as a father? You know, I'll go with the Board of Ed side first. So okay. it wouldn't be Lamont, it would be the CIAC. Well, whoever. Who would dictate all the guidelines. Um, and we can argue all day that the CIAC doesn't do a good job, <laughs> regardless of this topic. Um, so it would come from them. Uh, as a father, you know, Dennis, uh, I'd have to think about it. Um, have you thought of, ever thought about it? No, because it hasn't come up. Uh, oh. I mean, even if it hasn't come up, I would, there was, I would never let my daughter go into a locker room with a transgender. First of all, I don't believe, I think transgender is, personally, it's garbage. I really do. I think, oh, I feel like I'm a woman today. I'll just go in. And that's what I think they're doing. I've heard different issues that... So I'll ask you for a second. So you've heard... But have you ever talked well, to? Well, I also know. Have there you talked two, to Jen? There, there were two situations in Connecticut. Um, I think it was Connecticut, or was it two guys who said they were transgender? They competed, and they took away all the. Yeah, I think it was running. I think it was, uh, at a, uh, Rhode Island somewhere. Uh, no, they, I'm sorry, they, running I mean, event they, or something. They prevented the women from getting scholarships and everything because they won. They. They couldn't possibly win as a man, so they be say they became a woman and everything. Transgender, they don't go through the entire surgery or anything like that. And I think that's it's one. A it's a, a Catholic college. Thing, it was in really. the paper today in Vermont that just got banned because they wouldn't allow transgender. Well, they wouldn't compete against a school who had transgender. And I agree with that. I, def I don't think you should be allowed that. Dennis and I have talked about this many yeah. times. There should be separate sports for these transgenders. And, and I honestly haven't thought about it because it hasn't. We don't have it here. It hasn't come up. Um, I'm surprised it hasn't really. Uh, you know, you, you, you watch the news, you watch the world news or you know, nationwide news. Uh, and I'm on the Connecticut Association of Board of Education. This is kind of a sequitur here. And all the board chairs or secretaries or whatever get together twice every month. And um, sometimes I'm thrilled I'm on the New London Board of Education because I hear some of the other problems in the state. There's one Board of Ed where if Dennis and I are on the Board of Ed, he challenged me to a duel in the middle of a Board of Ed meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was pissing me off. Yeah, so I, I'm so... I can see that at Well, yeah, but I, I listen to what... I, we all have problems, and everybody yeah, can argue right. we have problems in New London, too, but I hear some of the other problems, and I go, oh, my God. <laughs> you okay. know, we're pretty civil. I guess we're, we are. We're, we're talking. We have an argument. We have people every now and then who come and do public comment, and they destroy the Board of Ed. Sometimes people come and say nice things. It's just like counsel. But, you know, we, we don't have fights at Board of Ed meetings. Right. We don't right. have protests. We don't have a lot of the things that we've all seen on the news. Kind of one of the charming things about New London. You know, we can argue all day, and then I'll look at Eric and say we're still going to lunch. Right? Let me, absolutely, no, no, you're absolutely right. Let me ask right. you this. How do you... Um, well, hang on. Let me go, and then I'll let you know. Um, you're not host anymore, Eric. I'm sorry. I know. No. I, I'm not in that chair this week. <laughs> We're... Oops. Every year, the school is asking for more money. Yeah. And that's half of everything else in this town is asking for more money, more money, more money. Do you think you're ever going to see a time when there's just no more money to give? Yeah. And then what are you guys going to do? <laughs> you know, I, there's there's a couple of things I fear, Dennis. Um it, the budget and the grants are about 50-50 in the city of New London. What happens if the grants run out? Well, they have with the uh, chefs, didn't it? You had... Uh, you had you every, uh, in every elementary school... Oh, the, well, that's still in place. Brigade is still in place. We, oh, but did they... Uh, it's, it's funded by Brigade, and we pay the, the head person of the program. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. but those, t those chefs, they're getting... Aren't their uh, benefits coming from the city? I'm not 100% sure if they get benefits from the city because it's, it's funded through Brigade. Uh, I, I can double check, yeah, Dennis. But, I, I, but that's what I had heard. But I, I do worry. True. Yeah, we, we all might run out of money. I mean, yeah. January 1st started and our Eversource bills went up 30%. I, I saw a report <laughs> one time. Well, that's why I, I changed from Eversource. Yeah, but like I have gas. What, what are my choices? I don't. Well, I don't you better know. think all of I something because they're going to take your freaking gas stove away. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a different subject, but yeah. Yeah, but and regardless, I'm just trying to be funny. But no, it's, um, we all see our bills going up. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I, you're right, Dennis, w ours are going up. I mean, you can look at the cost drivers. Again, increase in energy right there. Right. Bam. You know, um, salary increases. Yeah, but why are some of these things going up because they really need the money to keep producing what they're producing? Or is it just this is a good time? Uh, to just get more money out of people. I don't think so. I don't think it's the because wider. how can this stuff that you buy for the school go up every year? Well, well, everybody gets a raise, right? You know, uh, I, we just talked about EverSource insurance. It goes That's up. your biggest insurance one. Is going, I mean, I don't know yeah. what to tell you. We had a decrease in magnet student enrollment. We, we talked about that earlier. So, so you get a decrease from the from right. So we get a decrease. State. So therefore, we need to supplement Extra, right, somehow. Right. Um, this is a huge one, not just here, everywhere, special needs education. Okay. Yeah. So let's say you, you have your budget, you're going along, and then a, a new family comes into town and there's a special needs student, and all of a sudden you need an extra $300,000, you know, whatever it might be. We have no, we're a public institution. We educate everybody. So that, that's a tough one. It can blow up your whole budget as right. you're going along. Uh, we talked about uh, multi-language mm -hmm. learners. Um, Inflation stuff goes up, paper, right. computers, whatever. Uh, transportation has gone up, obviously. And then um, increase of enrollment. So I'll explain this one just so everybody understands. Friendship School in Waterford, uh, there's about 60 new students coming into our district because they decided to close their kindergarten program in December. And all of a sudden, we have to accommodate. There are kids. Why do we have to accommodate? Because they're students from New London. Oh, they are from New London. Who went to the Friendship School. So all of a sudden, we have 60 new kids. And you don't have the teachers. We don't have the teachers. We don't have the space. We don't have the desks. We don't have the books. So whatever number that is, because we have to figure out where they're all going to go. And this is an approximate number because we don't know. And if you throw those kids into the magnet numbers, you need to then recruit another percentage on top of the 60 to recruit, recoup the magnet dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, so that happened in December. Thank you. Learn for dumping this on us and giving us no notice as we're developing our budget. How would you feel, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but we've talked about it. There are um, agencies in the government, the federal government, that are not even necessary. The EPA. Get rid of the EPA. It's not needed. It started like this, and it's like this. I think most of the agencies have gone like right. this. Right, and Washington is just over. Government is just too much in our lives. We've got to shrink government. How about you get rid of the Department of Education, and instead of the money that goes there, it stays in the state. Would that help? Huh. Um, I don't know about federally, but what I would like the Connecticut State Department of Education to do is do their jobs. They what? Do their jobs. They do their jobs. That would help out a lot. So I don't have to say, this was your due date. Where is this new program? I'll give you a quick mm -hmm. example. Uh, legislators passed a new uh, law to give scholarships to graduating seniors who are minorities to go into teaching. The due date was January 1st. So our kids in New London could apply for these scholarships. Whatever the date is today, it still hasn't happened. I've written well, to the... Has it happened because the money hasn't come through? Or no, just the money's there. They haven't built the portal. portal. Or um, the students don't want to go into teaching. No, no, they, you can't apply yet because they haven't done their job oh, oh, oh. So to this allow is the, the kids to okay, apply. Okay, so this is the Connecticut they State They come up Department. with a lot of great ideas up that they think are great ideas. Right. And then they never go anywhere with it it's for years. <laughs> and here's the problem with that. Legislation, legislators pass laws or whatever. What happens to the laws. Does anybody follow up on those? There's too many. I don't know how anybody is smart enough to know all the laws. Well, if you're the Connecticut State Department of Education, you, you get a list of all the laws and you should get them done. But they don't. And then no, it costs because them. they care about changing the name of the Thames River to Pequot River. Well, it has nothing to do with... with well, no, <laughs> but that's what these politicians do. I mean, they don't do what they should be doing to help Connecticut. I would rather see Nolan and Marx spend more time trying to get these kids educated and get whatever money they can from the federal government for the schools 
than to waste their time on renaming a river. So I don't think it would be no one in Marks in that case. Obviously, it would be Courtney and whoever else to get the federal government. Right. But obviously, they would work you know within the state. No, mm -hmm. so you got to start somewhere. But I, I agree, Dennis. Right. I'm just saying you know there's there's a division uh, on how all that would work. Um, how do you? And you're not, you've only been a board member for four years. Yeah, I wouldn't have say we, only. It feels like forever sometimes, oh, Eric. Sometimes, <laughs> but we go, we go back what, to here. 15, 20 years when we started this group called Looking Out for Taxpayers. And we fought a lot with the uh, city of New London and everything. And the school. And the school. And I don't know if you... There was um, a woman, Barbara Major, Tommy Major's yep. wife. She passed away. But she stood up in front of the uh, city council and board of education. This was at, at the high school when we yeah. uh, uh, meet. And she said, we need to close the school system in New London and farm it out. Because the, we, were in, we were in and have still been in the lowest 5% of the entire state. Sure. So we're throwing money into a school system that hasn't imp technically improved in, for us, 20 years? How, how does that get justified? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, first of all, I'm not in favor of closing <laughs> any, any, closing. any of the school districts. Well, this, this then it goes, goes to back yeah. to regionalization and stuff like that. Right. I, and, um, and, it, and also, the reason, a big reason you don't, they don't want to get rid of uh, schools or closing, we, it because of sports. Yes. So explain what you mean by that. Well, New London kids have the Whalers. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go to Montville. They don't want to go to Waterford oh, or Run and, and play for them. They want to play for New London. Yeah. And yeah. some of the people that spoke out against that idea most were parents whose kids were in the sports, and some of them are, you know, they're at certain levels. You know, I'm a yeah. quarterback or basketball or whatever. So it th was a that's, sports. That's big thing with closing the school system stuff. But, again, how do we get out of being in the lowest 5% of the state? So I honestly think we put in systems that the superintendent has put in and with her current team that actually, are, you know, they're moving the needle. It's not an overnight thing. Obviously, you're talking 20 years ago. Yeah. But I, I said this when we went over this material. I said this is the first time since I've been on the Board of Ed for four years that there's positive results. Okay. Will that continue, Eric? I don't know. I certainly wouldn't want to be, like we already discussed, a child due to um, two to four years of this COVID crap, graduating, and you're gonna have the, some of the dumbest kids getting well, into society. That's every, again, that's everywhere. That's everywhere, but I mean, because New London is, is like low man on phone call, but. And I would say it's in regards to test scores, you know, I think you're 100% right. But I also think a lot of the experiences we provide in New London, real world things, mm -hmm. go a long way for kids being successful yeah. as they get out. Uh, real quick on the sports thing, it's a, do a plug. Uh, the girls team is, basketball team is playing for the state championship on Sunday at 8.15 at Mohegan Sun. So. I, I, I think it's great. Yeah, I, do, I just want to throw that out there. I do. No, no, no. I, I mean, I definitely think it's great. Um, but, I mean, you've, you've changed my mind a little about, you know, with New London and everything, and I do understand because of COVID, and I do understand because of But I'm not going to use it as an all. excuse. Pardon? I, I don't want to use COVID as an excuse. No. But I, it's a reason for things. It's a re I know. That I do know because of my wife. Yeah. And thank God she's retired and she's very happy about that. Um, Congratulations, by the way. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> well, I didn't say he was happy. What? <laughs> What'd you but say? she is. I said, we didn't say you were happy. I wasn't congratulating him. I'm no, I, I, no I, believe me, I'm very happy for her. I mean, you're going to go do another How do we get so old so fast? I mean, I'm going to be 70 in, in a week and a half. So, Are um, you really? Huh? Really? Yeah. Come on. But, catching up to me you know the interesting thing uh, with COVID too a lot of times uh, retired teachers would come back and sub but because of sort of the age bracket they might have been in right they didn't come back no, well she won't go she even if she's asked she wouldn't go back right but a lot of people would have but because they're older and because COVID was so prevalent we didn't have teachers coming back well Dennis brought up the situation about we need more trade schools 
-hmm. And I've seen this, I mean, I have never seen in my life where plumbers, engineers, um, carpenters, uh, electricians, all trade school people, they're making more than medical people. Uh, you know, when they when the plumber comes and knocks on your door and there's a- It's $165, you, I was gonna say, there's an invoice just to walk through the door. Yeah, and and we've, we're, we've started, after coming out of COVID, working with EB and different programs, um, trying to push kids in that direction. Because quite frankly, not every kid should be going to college. Oh, right? yeah. Or maybe they do something for a period of time and then they go to college. I shouldn't have gone to college. I have my master's degree. I probably should have failed out the first semester. But you know what? Somehow made it through. But there are other options out there. And you're talking to the person who wants kids to go to college if they want to. If they want to go into their family business, go for right. it. If you want to go into trade school, great. If you can pick up a trade the day after you graduate, even better. And as a retired military family, if you want to go into the military, go for it. So you got your master's. You've got, I mean, I, did you pay for school? I still have loans. So do you think? No. It's not worth it. No, what? College is super expensive. It's too, so sh should the government be bailing out these kids? It's a really good question. Uh, as a loan holder myself, I tend to think so uh, because I was sold something that never came true. But uh, I paid for college. Mm -hmm. My wife paid for college. I mean, it was all, yeah. why should everybody get a, so, I mean, because it's going to. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. So, so, you're not. And it's not you're 100%. Not gonna, yes. The most anybody's going to get out of this is, 20, is so maybe 20000 I'm a big fan of, I'll make it really simple. You took out a loan. You pay back the dollar amount that you took out. Where does the interest go? The government should have had more control over these agencies that were talking people into taking out these kind of loans right. with the interest rate to go to college. So my, my, That's the people who should, be, who should have to pay back. So. And, this is, well, and this is my point. Just pay back your loan. Most people's loans are double and triple. It, it should probably be interest-free. How about interest-free loans? That's my point. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Just pay back your loan. I have a friend who, whose daughter went to become a, a not an AP, a, a, physician, a physician's assistant, I think, or an APRN, whatever it is. She worked for this place. She works for this place for seven to ten years, whatever it is. Whatever's left after that, the facility was yeah. going to pay. That I think is a good idea. And then we do that in, uh, in a lot of cities in, in the in uh, for Board of Eds uh, for school systems. Um, I think New Haven has a program like that. You teach for five years, right? And whatever you know, it gets eliminated. But I mean, college is expensive, right? And it's you too said you're expensive. In, it's, you it's, said you're in the medical field. What person is going to go through college and be a doctor and not have you know six digit loans? But see, there's another there's another setup in the government to where if people come out as doctors, they go to medical school, they become a doctor, they graduate from wherever, and they got, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars worth of loans, mm -hmm. they can go, the government will put them in places where there is no ho close hospital. It's a small town. Sure. They're the doctor. Yeah. And then they get their loan taken care of if they stay there for a certain amount of years. Right. I'm a huge fan of that, uh, Dennis. I I'm a def yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would help. Before we get, I got a question I want to ask you but just one. is there anything <laughs> is there anything important here that you no, need to tell I, us I, about I, I just brought these because I knew you were gonna probably ask about the budget and it just seems you know these are simple things to these are the costs that have gone up these are the things we've tried to save on and you know I, I, I just brought them because it well, no, I mean, I'm glad you brought them um, okay so yeah can save me and Eric wanted to take a tour of the new high school mm -hmm. How would we go about that? So if you wanted to do a tour of the entire high school, yes. uh, we actually have tours. All the work that's been done. Yeah, yeah. so we actually have tours open uh, once every other month on the second Tuesday uh, of the month. Can you send me a text yeah. when it gets close to that? Yep. I would like to do that. Yeah, so I, I haven't been to the high yeah. school since my kid. So I, I can. So we do it, it's 3 p.m. on whatever the next two, we just did one last week, so it'd be uh, now two April, a, yeah, May. <laughs> Uh, yeah, essentially two months. It was uh, this Monday. Uh, it's 3 p.m. It's at the high school. We meet in the, the new uh, open area there. Uh, what we would do, we'd, we'd take you to the, the new gym, uh, the auditorium, the new music wing. Um, you the, got a music wing? It's a music wing and then the elementary. It's, it's the pathway. So you have the auditorium in the back is where the rehearsal rooms and different things are. There's a pathway for music? Yes. 
or arts. We call it the arts. Well, okay, but is a section in there for just music? Yes. Wow, I did not know. Uh, And then the larger portion, which we call the tower, the portion half of it is completed, the other half is, you know, we're still working on it. So uh, during the tour, we'd be able to probably go to the new portion, obviously, and then if it's a safe area, you can go into the construction area. Uh, That portion of the school will be turned over to our staff and students in September. And then after that, we will be demolishing the S-Wing, which is where the old shop is, and that will be a turnaround area. And the uh, old high school and the science and tech will have a, not a tunnel, but a covered area so the kids don't have to go outside uh, during the winter okay. or in the summer, the air conditioning. It used to be a big stink some, some years back. I, I forgot who it was. They had um, a disabled child in the schools, and it was a big stink about he had to go to the back of the school and get in an elevator to go up a flight or whatever, yeah, yeah. and there was a big push about putting an elevator yep. in a more common place. Yeah. Did that have, is that gotten done with the new? Yeah, so there's, t- to my knowledge, Dennis, there's two elevators. One, which is kind of uh, next to the, um, the gymnasium, and then in the tower, if you come in, the, come in the old entrance of the school, you'll literally see it. It's brick now, so you might not know it's an elevator, but mm-hmm. it's right there. It goes all the way up to the top of the tower. All right, I got one more question, and you can go ahead. take it. I want to talk real quick about your little pet project with the chef stuff. The <laughs> big kitchen you guys had to make. I mean, it's probably half the size of the gymnasium. I don't really know that because I haven't been there. But first of all, do you use gas stoves in that? Yes. Okay, so you guys you might be one? in for another big bill. Um, yeah. Gas stoves. Yeah, I told. I want to take the gas stoves. I told away. a bunch of legislators because we we added air conditioning and different things, and um, I said, "So are you going to give us more money because electricity went up?" And they said, no, but it was the right thing to do. And my reply was, well, it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> so uh, all the kids in the school go through that whole chef thing? I know there's a better name for it. Uh, it it's elective. Uh, so it's a culinary program. Uh, you know, if they elect to go through the program, they can. Now, how do they fit that in with what they normally would do in a day? I mean, is it not like an extra course or something? No, it, it's, or? It's, we're on a block schedule now. So if you're on oh. culinary, maybe you go Monday and Wednesday or something like that. But it's just it's it's just an elective. Is there any plans to make that after school hours make that some kind of a a public thing to where people that want to be chefs and want to get better at it maybe before they go to college or wherever that they would actually pay to come in and be taught stuff? I don't think we would do it through the school district, but Park and Rec uh, might be able to do some sort of program because they have access to our facilities. Yeah, but I'm thinking about the new kitchen. Yeah, no, I understand. They have access to all of our facilities. I think it's after 4 p.m. As long as we don't have um, something scheduled, like yeah. if there's a basketball game, Park and Rec won't have access to the gym. So does that look promising for the school, the, the whole idea of teaching people to be chefs? I just don't know about the school district, but I think Park and Rec, Dennis. Um, I think no, I meant the kids that take it. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, you mean going out and cooking you know, as a yeah, career? There is, there is, I think, in... In, in the high school. You oh, yeah. Well, they just built, they built I mean, a big when you thing. Get into kindergarten or something, that, with Nathan Hale, you could take, you know, you want to go get into um, ballet or certain... Don't get me like, started I mean, but, on then, that crap. I know, but <laughs> but they have a separate room. I know, I know, so which, just, is, which is a waste I mean, of freaking money. I don't think, I, I, I honestly think. don't think, well, what I do think is the first thing you need to be teaching anyone, any kid, reading, writing, and arithmetic. I, I, I have, get rid of all the other crap because there's nobody from kindergarten up to, let's say, fifth grade who really knows what they want to do. I want to be a fireman this month. I want to be a dancer yeah, I, this I, month. I, I mean, that's, that's just ridiculous. Well, How are they going to handle that? You know, you got a kid in second grade now and he was studying, you know, he wanted to be yeah. a dancer. And then he gets to second grade after two years of it and says, no, nah, I don't want to be a dancer anymore. Yeah, I mean, they would have to transfer within the pathways to a different pathway. To a but, different. Yeah, but, but with the three R's, as we you used call to always it, call it. Even right. though, you know, they, it doesn't start with R. But, <laughs> well, <laughs> but I, I, you know, you, you, I agree. You, you start with those three, and then you add other core and, items. Right. You know, I'm a musician. There's lots of studies that kids who do music do better right. in math for whatever reason. You know, and I'm sure there's... if a kid the beat. That, I don't know. I, I'm Water, not very good at math. Aps. I'm not very good at math, so I failed that part of the... <laughs> <laughs> Regarding energy, yeah, you said, I mean, yes, I know Eversource has gone up. Is that what the school system uses, Eversource, as their 
Yeah, we don't really have an option. We do have some solar panel things. Well, no, no, no. That's not, why can't you switch from Eversor, Eversource and go to Constellation? Oh, oh, so we have a negotiated rate along with the city. Do you know, even know what that rate is? Um, I know it's up in December. I don't know what it is currently. Uh, I'm actually looking into this today for myself. I know last year Eversource was 12 and a half cents. And now it's 24. I switched over to Constellation for 13.7. Yeah, and I saw today it was 11, 12, and 13. That for what? For me, switching a personal to Constellation. I was I don't remember which company. So anybody who in there has half a brain would switch. I, I agree with you, and, and that's why we do the negotiated rate. And so hopefully, you can lock it in for say three or four years, and take the chances that it doesn't go right. lower. But you should have a, a cap, or you can go lower. Okay. You know that as, type of thing. As far as the uh, so the heat, real, real quick, Dennis, it, oh. it's not regionalization, but it's the board of ed working with the city. If you want to call that regionalization, okay. well, we don't we don't do that a lot. But this is one of those opportunities where we can come together and get a better rate for the whole. For as the whole far sound. as far yeah. as the heating in the schools go, um, do they get their oil? Do all the schools get their oil from the same place? as a city or is each school different so we're trying to do away with everything so it's gas dennis uh i'm not a hundred percent sure I, I would think we we have a negotiated rate there too but i'd have to double check on that one for you okay. all right uh, we got like a minute i think two minutes and, so. and at the high school it's a it's a moot point it's all going to be uh gas because we're we, we even transferred over any of the boilers that were you uh, got to come you got to come back brian can eric come too yes he can come <laughs> This is a good learning experience. It for is. This is good. This is good. So you're going to run again then? I'm not sure yet. We'll, we'll you're find You're going to be president of the board. Yeah, you know. Um, Easier job. <laughs> Wait a minute. This, so this is, this is, a, um, this is an election. election year. Yeah, you know, conceivably in the city of New London, you could have seven new board members, seven new councilors, and a new mayor. You're not going to have seven new councilors. I'm just saying conceivably. I'll tell you that right now because there's... Oh, well, I you may put, have I put money a couple on. of different ones, but the city will not change. I mean, this this city is just so one-sided, it's, and it's they forget about the other side. How's the board do? I mean, it's do. Is there a lot of political thing that comes up, or they leave all that crap at so the door? So we're seven Democrats right now, um, but I, oh. it, in the four years I've been on it, political has not come up. Well, at that's all. good. You can maybe teach the city council how to do that. Yeah, I haven't been to council in a while. I would say this about the Board of Ed. In the four years I've been on, let's say Eric and I are on the Board of Ed, and we're arguing, 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 and Eric wins, so then we turn the page. <laughs> Time to go on to the next one. Brian lost. It is what it is. It is what it is. You well, know, I haven't heard anything bad about the Board in, since you've been on it. I'm not saying that's... I'll take the credit, Dennis. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, there's been boards where... Yeah, you know, we're relatively quiet. You don't read about us on the news. I don't think you see a lot of social media posts or different things. We're going to be ending. So thank you for coming on. Ah, thank you. And, uh, yes, this was great. Maybe next month we can get you back on. If there's anything ever really you feel needs to get out, it's yeah. very important, you just call me. Or yeah, if even if you have you to do on. your own show. Hey. We'll come on your show. Hey, we could do that. <laughs> I get to interview you both. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Might be that. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in tonight. And uh, we won't see you next week because there won't be any shows. Um, but we will see you the week after that. Well, he's got shoes. Okay. He's got what? He's got